How you doing guys? So good to be back here. Soul Refuge, W.F. White here once again, preaching the Word of God. And uh, today I'm going to deal with something that uh, very recent over the past uh, couple of days. Listen to this folks, CNN, this is a, an article I came across, Pope Francis nominates 1,000 super confessors. You say, what on earth are we talking about? BBC News, Pope Francis dispatches 1,000 super confessor priests. So uh, in the CNN article, it tells us that Pope Francis has dispatched more than 1,000 super confessors all over the world. The missionaries of mercy, as the church officially calls them, are nominated by the Pope himself who created this new office specifically for the Jubilee Year of Mercy, which ends in November. They are priests who have been given a special license for the duration of the Jubilee Year to forgive grave sins that usually only the Pope or top church officials can pardon. Now, some of those sins I read in some of the articles, uh, sins such as the sins of abortion, or perhaps if a person uh, defiled what they call the Blessed Sacrament, uh, these are super grave sins, so you need to uh, be forgiven by uh, church hierarchy. Only special people can do it. So here the Pope is appointing what he calls super confessors. Let me say something here, folks. This is nothing but man-made gibberish. That's all it is. Man-made traditions, the inventions of man, and that is in fact what that system of Roman Catholicism, folks, uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, keep in mind, I, I remind you again and again, I speak as a former Roman Catholic. Uh, listen to me today, uh, folks. If, if you're not saved, I'm going to give you some good information, uh, and, and, and this is guaranteed information. What do I mean by that? Uh, the Lord guarantees uh, certain things, and this is the true gospel. He will guarantee that you can come to Him and be saved, folks. And, and I'm here to tell you, you don't have to go into a Roman Catholic confessional booth. You don't have to go and meet with any super confessor priest. And, and I'm talking to you today, perhaps you're one of those people, those women, who have had a, an abortion, okay? I met a girl once and she told me, uh, this was in the late 1970s. She she seemed bothered, and, and and she was rightly bothered by the fact she told me her sister had four abortions. Very concerned. And by at that time in my life, I, I was as lost as could be. So I really didn't know what to make of it, folks. Uh, I, I, did, I knew it wasn't good. But here... Uh, you may be one of those people and now you're wondering how you can get to uh, one of these super confessors. Well, I got some good news for you today, folks. I'm going to give you the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You can bypass the confessional booth or, or confessor or w whatever, folks. That's man-made tradition. I'm going to give you the truth on how you can be saved. Okay, keep in mind, I speak as a former Roman Catholic, so I know uh, what that system's about. I know what it is to go into a confessional booth. Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been seven weeks or seven years since my last confession. Whatever it is, folks, I'm here to tell you today, you do not have to do that. You can go straight to the Mass, the glory to God. Now, it's important that you know Romans chapter 3. I'm going to give you, you know, uh, sometimes they refer to uh, this as the Romans road of salvation. Why? Because it's some good verses in the scriptures, in the Bible, uh, that point out how to get saved. So Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, it tells us, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 10 and 11, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second. Folks, I don't care who you are, what, what your walk in life is, what job you have, whether you're a man or a woman, what country you live in, what race, what language you speak. Uh, according to the word of God, and hear me now, this is the way God sees you. You are a sinner. You come short of his glory, just like everyone else, including me, okay? So 
What I'm doing to you today, I'm passing on the Word of God, the truth that can set you free. You must understand that your sin most definitely will separate you from God. You are not righteous in and of yourself. That's something you need to know. So, so what we're talking here is it, you need more than going to a confessional booth, folks. That's a man-made tradition. You need to get in contact with God himself, okay? And there's only one way to do that. Obviously, it's by faith. You cannot see God. You don't see God. We don't have a, 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 a picture of God, but you can contact him by faith. So here's what you need to know. You are ungodly in his sight. You are a sinner, okay? Now, Romans 6.23, it tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there it is. The wages of sin. Okay, that's the wages of your sin. you got to make it personal. You know, we know that everybody else is a sinner. Sometimes people think, well, I never murdered anybody, or I never did this, or I never did that. Well, that's good you didn't uh, murder anybody, but folks, you're still a sinner. You are as lost as anybody could be on planet Earth. That's what you need to know. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, you know that Jesus Christ went to the cross, he shed his blood, and he did that for you. And I'm going to come back to the cross, but you must understand that that same Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, yes, he did. There is where the victory is. He conquered sin and death, and he did it for you as well as me. He did it for everybody, folks, but here's the deal. You have a choice to make. Listen to what Jesus said. Now, this is what Christ spoke after he rose from the dead. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, these words were spoken by him after he was butchered upon a cross and laid in a grave, folks. Don't ever forget that he got up from the dead. And these words were spoken after that. So I'm going to read Luke 24 verses 44 to 47. And he said unto them, that's Jesus speaking, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's powerful, folks. So here's the Lord. He's speaking to his own followers and he told them, Look, these things, including his death upon the cross, had to be fulfilled. These things were prophesied, folks, written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms, and what did Jesus say? Concerning me, okay? This is what salvation is all about. It's concerning Jesus Christ. It's not about this. It's not about that. Folks, get it straight here. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about the person of Jesus Christ. This is where you need to connect that spiritual connection folks it has to be with the lord okay this is how you come to know the lord for real it's not knowing about jesus christ it's knowing jesus christ there's a big difference folks many people have a um, uh, head knowledge they know a lot of facts about christ they got all sorts of notes written in notebooks they know a lot but they've never come to the place where they can say they know him okay so let me read now Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, okay? This is also spoken by the Lord after he rose from the dead. And he said unto them, Jesus speaking, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now keep in mind, folks, the one who spoke those words is the same one who created the very ground that you and I walk on. Butchered on a cross, got up from the dead, and now he gives his disciples instructions. Go into the world and preach the gospel to everyone. That's what I'm doing right here, folks. 
I'm doing it by way of, of the internet. So you can click your uh, computer mouse and hear it. That's the beauty of, of uh, th this internet. You can, you can hear the word. This word can go all over the world. That's exactly what I'm doing here today. Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every Christian. The word gospel means good news, ladies and gentlemen. But look at how clear the Lord made it clear that the believer would be saved the unbeliever, those who believe not, shall be damned. And that's some heavy stuff, folks. If you're a believer, you'll be saved. If you don't believe, you're going to be damned. We're talking eternal life in heaven or eternity in hell. Very rarely do you hear about this anymore, folks. There's a sugar-coated gospel that's preached throughout this nation. It's preached throughout this world. It's a bogus gospel. You're hearing the truth here, folks, how to get saved. Now listen to this. I'm going to close with this, folks. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, spoken by the Jewish apostle Paul. This man, before he got saved, known as Saul, changed his name to Paul. This man was a nasty man. He was an absolute tyrant. He persecuted Christians, consented unto the death of many of those Christians. They were blaspheming. He caused them to blaspheme. And these, uh, these are things that he uh, testified that he did, folks. But then he got saved. Okay? Gloriously saved. Keep in mind, I said, he's Jewish. This gospel, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is for Jew and Gentile. Nobody is excluded. But hear me now. You must come through Christ. If you don't come to Christ, folks, you simply remain in your sins. You have no blood atonement because it's only the blood that can atone for your soul. Don't ever forget that. So here are these verses here, whether you're Jew or whether you're Gentile. It says this, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet, peradventure, or perhaps, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Totally awesome passage of scripture, folks. Remember, Christ died for the ungodly. Folks, we made it clear at the beginning of this message, you're ungodly. Without Christ, you are ungodly. Hear me now, you are ungodly. But the good news, folks, is that God's love is so intense toward you that he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Christ died for us. Put your name there, folks. This is how you get saved. Avoid the confessional booth. You don't have to go to a confessional booth. You don't have to go to a super confessor. Like I said, I don't care if you uh, had abortions. And hear me today, folks. You may have murdered somebody. I'm talking to the murderer today. You may have murdered somebody and you, and you can't get it out of your mind. Uh, repent. Uh, God can save you. And by the way, uh, uh, this man, the Apostle Paul, he was a murderer. He consented to the death of many people, folks, but God saved them. And here's how you justify, folks, man or woman, I don't care where you live in the world, you're justified by his blood. Whose blood? The blood of Jesus Christ. You're saved from what? Saved from wrath. The wrath of God, folks, we're dealing with salvation. Hear me now. That does not mean you will not suffer in this world. But the wrath of God has been removed from you. You have been reconciled back to God. How? Through the death of his son. That's how you get saved. So keep in mind, folks, I am speaking as a former Roman Catholic. I don't confess my sins to a priest. In fact, the Bible says, call no man father. And that's this pope is marching around the world with the title of Holy Father. It's incredible, folks. Absolutely incredible. In fact, he's uh, going to Mexico. He might even be there already. While Christians who refuse to convert to the Roman Catholic Church, they've been tossed in jail. Their property has been confisc confiscated. Why? Because there's two different Gospels, folks. There's the man-made traditions of Rome, and then there is the true Gospel, which you just heard. Salvation is found in only one place. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Don't ever forget that. So folks, I bring that to you today. No matter what you pass, no matter what you sin, the mercy of God is available for you. The grace of God is available for you. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love that word, saved. You can know you're saved, folks. You can know you're going to heaven and that's exactly what God wants you to have, folks. It's the peace that passes understanding. And you can, hear me now, you can't have peace. I don't care whether you're rich, you could be a millionaire, you could be a billionaire. Let me tell you something, you know it. That ain't bringing you peace. There's always gonna be something deep inside your heart. You know, something's not right. And you know what that is? That's God calling you. He wants to put the peace there, folks. But you gotta get right with Him. And you can only get right with God through what Christ did on the cross, through the death of his son. I'm going to leave it right there. Be blessed once again in the name of Jesus Christ.